All right, so let's let's construct an object. Okay. So how do we construct an object in JavaScript? Object construction. Construction. Objects can be constructed in a couple of ways. We will see those here. Properties, I know this was in the slides, but I just want to, it's important to emphasize, properties can be added to objects after construction. Okay, super helpful um, and potential pitfall. All right, so a couple ways we can create an object. We can create what's called an empty object. That's an object with no properties. So we can create an empty object. with the object constructor syntax. And it looks like this. Let, um, I'm gonna call all my objects here, we're gonna focus on journal entry. We're gonna eventually be writing a journal app, so we'll do start kind of those ideas. Let journal entry equal new object. Looks very Java-like. So this creates a new JavaScript object that's empty. It has no properties. That's one way we can do it. Um, I'll be honest, I don't see that very often. We can also create an empty object with what's called the object literal. Much like we have string literals, number literals, but an object literal syntax instead. I do see this a lot. Journal entry equals a pair of curly brackets, right? Um, that's the JSON, right? So this is like the JSON syntax for an object with no properties, right? Opening curly bracket, closing curly bracket. It's an empty object. You'll see that a lot because this is a lot easier to type than this, but they're exactly the same. Um, if there are properties that we want to initialize with our object, um, then we do it in like JSON format usually. So we can also create an object with properties by properties, again, I mean like key value pairs in JSON format. And that looks like this. Journal entry equals curly bracket to start our object definition. The name of the property, let's say date, and we'll type in our date. Each key value property separated by a comma. Second property is going to be habit of mind. Let's do applying past knowledge to new situations. Let's change the date to today. This is what we're doing today in our journal. We are applying our past knowledge of Java to new situations, namely JavaScript. And then our journal could have some content and notice I'm like very flexible here in terms of like where I can add new lines and things, doesn't matter. By comparing and contrasting, you can type whatever you want for the comment, content. By comparing and con contrasting JavaScript objects to Java objects, I am strengthening my understanding. Contrasting. My spelling is atrocious today. Can I concatenate this? Looks like it. That's cool. Oh, just as a note. So with my formatter, you'll notice it's actually adding a comma at the end of the JSON. So one thing to be aware of, like we were talking about this earlier, like I got rid of the comma in the pure instruction question. Different JSON parsers are more or less flexible. So node here is certainly happy to have like this comma with no element after it, um, but others won't be necessarily so. All right, cool. We're gonna come back to this object like in the future, like next week, and we're gonna add more stuff to it. But for now, this is a good example of like key value pairs. Let's do some logging. Console.log, journal entry. And then also, let's log the type of it. And we can run this. 
So its type is an object, which is good. Um, look at how nicely when we console.log an object, look at how nicely it, it prints out all the JSON for us. Isn't that fantastic? Um, this makes it really easy to visually inspect objects um, and to debug things. So big fan of, of that. We didn't have to write a two-string method or anything, right? It just did it. So kudos to JavaScript. All right, so this is how we make objects. How, what about accessor, mutators, changing properties, all of this type of stuff? Um, it's a lot more straightforward than it is in Java. So let's focus on accessing properties first. So when we access properties, we use the dot notation, um, like in Java. Um, Non-existent properties. Tint. Properties return undefined. Okay, so just be aware of that. So we could do console.log, and I could say journal entry dot date. And I could do console console.log and I could say journal entry dot student name, which doesn't exist. And so when I run this. Here's the date printed, and here's undefined printed for the student name because it doesn't exist. Okay. These properties are all like public, right? Like we're not using accessor methods. We're not using mutator methods. We're just using the dot notation to access the properties. Um, I'm not aware of like the concept of visibility when it comes to properties in JavaScript objects. Okay. So we don't have to write all these access or mutator methods. We just do dot date dot whatever. So that's a little bit easier. Um, just to, this, this comes up a lot and sometimes it's unexpected. So I think it's worth adding this too. Properties can be added to objects after construction. So I can say something like journal entry dot student name, even though it wasn't defined before, and I can put my name here. And now if I log this, it will print out my name. So student name was undefined, but then I defined it, and now it prints Schmidt. All right. One more thing that's important to mention when it comes to objects is the concept of object references. Okay. I would say this is a concept that really confuses JavaScript programmers, but you all have a huge advantage over most JavaScript programmers because you know Java. Um, and object references in JavaScript work just like object references in Java. Okay, so this is good. All that like challenging conceptual work you did to wrap your head around object references in Java still applies. So variables of type object have a value that is a reference to the object. This is similar to Java. Yay, it's familiar. Copying an object reference is not the same as copying the object like in Java, okay? So it's the same idea here. This window seems so big, there we go. You can use object.assign and structured clone, structured, structured clone to clone objects, okay? So here, let's make some, I'm gonna put this up here, like in Java. Um, so all of this is like Java. So let's see what this, like, let's make this more concrete. Let's make a new journal entry variable and assign it to journal entry. This copies the value of the variable journal entry, which is an object reference to this variable new journal entry. So if I now do new journal entry dot date equals 
20 equals tomorrow. But then I do console.log for the original variable's date. Guess what? It's going to print the new value, right? Exactly like it would in Java, right? If we created a single object in Java, and then we copy that object reference to a second variable, and we modified one of those properties, the original variable refers, there's only one object, right? So we have multiple variables referring to the same object, changing the value via either of the variables changes the one and only object. So while JavaScript programmers get tripped up by this, I don't think you all will because we've done a lot of this in APCSA in this class. But I do want to like reinforce that, hey, JavaScript behaves in exactly the same way. And this is like super common, like Python behaves exactly this way too. We just don't run into this issue in Python as much in programming one and two, but it is all consistent. So if I run this now, we'll see like, did the date not change? Oh, <laughs> look at that. The date didn't change. This is like a cool opportunity. It printed out, it didn't change the date. It's today. Angela, what did I do wrong? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I said data, right? I just talked about what a pitfall this is. I declared a new property called data. So let's actually log the object so we can see this. I'll delete this later, but I think this is like a great example of how easy it is to like create weird bugs. So when I log out the object now, look, here's the date property. I didn't change that. I made a new property called data because I can't type, right? So this is an example of the pitfall that is so easy to run into. So I'm going to change this to date, get rid of this, run this again. There, now it works as expected. That was a happy little mistake. Very cool. All right. 